the Samsung S24. This is the Australian version and it's the first time since the S21 that we've got the less powerful Exynos processor instead of the Snapdragon. Only a SIM ejector tool and a USB 2.0 cable. You can tell it's only USB 2 because it's missing the 8 extra pins required for the USB 3 speeds. Actually I'll leave this on to protect the screen while I disassemble it. Samsung have changed the lower speaker to a larger slit, instead of a grill. Taking a closer look it seems there's something defective with my speaker mesh. It looks a little janky. It doesn't look like it's installed properly. Looking at the grill on the S22 and S23, it looks better protected, but is also harder to clean out dust and gunk. I was being very cautious so I ran some isopropyl alcohol along the seam. Ok I'll take it out of the jig now. Ah wrong way, wrong way. Be careful of the rear microphone adhesive when taking the back off. The border adhesive is separate to the camera bezel adhesive which makes replacement easier. This is the wireless charging coil and NFC antenna. And on the back there is a battery temperature resistor. I'll disconnect the flex cables from the motherboard before unscrewing 7 more screws holding in the loudspeaker. This houses the lower loudspeaker along with the vibration module. The loudspeaker has a mesh valve, presumably with little white balls behind it, to create richer sounds. Now I can remove the ribbon cables connecting the motherboard to the daughter board. The daughter board has three more screws before it can be lifted out. This board has the lower microphone, the SIM tray which appears to be a dual SIM module, even though this S24 is not a dual SIM variant, as well as the 24 pin USB-C port with a red rubber gasket for waterproofing. 
The frame also has a rubber gasket for the lower loudspeaker. Five more screws and I can lift up the top speaker without unplugging the flex cable first because I'm a rebel. Here is the upper loudspeaker, also with the same mesh vent. Two more screws and the motherboard along with the cameras can be removed. On the motherboard there's the top facing microphone and the camera flash. On the other side we have the rear facing microphone, proximity sensor and a large silicon thermal pad on top of the RAM. This is of course a double stacked motherboard and if you look closely you can see the little solder balls connecting the two boards with a spacer in the middle. The camera specs are almost identical to the previous two generations with a 10 megapixel telephoto lens with 3 times optical zoom and OIS, a 50 megapixel wide main camera with OIS and a 12 megapixel ultra wide camera with no OIS. The front facing camera is a 12 megapixel unit and is sealed in the frame and to the screen with liquid adhesive. We of course have the new battery pull tabs Samsung have been adding to their phones, but the batteries are still fastened down too strongly and pulling up on the battery without any assistance could easily bend the battery and cause damage. Even some light heat from the other side doesn't help much, so I'll drip some isopropyl alcohol down the sides to soften the adhesive. The S24 battery is a fraction bigger than its predecessors with 4000 milliamp hours. Now we get a good look at that impressive vapour chamber which runs up under the frame underneath the RAM and processor. As this is a non-North American variant there's no millimetre wave antennas, just empty spaces. For those worried about sticking the Simajack tool in the microphone holes, rest assured it won't cause any damage to the microphone or waterproof membrane. The side buttons can be pushed out from the inside if in need of replacement. No need to keep track of your screws as they're all the same. Okay, let's reassemble.
I'll reuse the existing adhesive as replacements aren't available yet. 